If you're told by your doctors that you need to have a medical device or implant to keep you healthy, you'd probably assume that regulators had done all they could to make sure it was safe and that it wouldn't cause you harm. But an international investigation has uncovered serious problems with the way devices are regulated in Australia. And that's not only left people in pain, it's been linked to the deaths of 170 people. Reporter Sophie Scott and producer Alison Branley investigate. Look around you. Chances are there's someone with a medical device, from a hip replacement to a shoulder implant, lying just under their skin. There are 57,000 different medical devices used in Australia, with hundreds of new ones given the tick of approval each month. I thought I was really going to get something out of it. And um, I just wanted my shoulder to work. And I didn't want any more of the pain that I was having. In this worldwide investigation, 730 can reveal in just six years, more than 12,000 problems were reported with medical devices in Australia. More than 8,500 of those related to serious injuries and devices were implicated in 170 deaths. Queensland Army veteran Wolfgang Nesbohr hoped a partial shoulder implant would stop his chronic pain. I've watched my stepkids grow up. I never wanted to do things, but I can't do them. And I watch every other kid have their parents out doing these things with them, but I can't do it. After being injured while playing sport in the army, in 2012, his surgeon, Dr. Philip Duke, suggested a clinical trial of a new state-of-the-art shoulder implant called a pyrotitan. He said, oh, we got this new fantastic procedure. But the device, made from a new material, had only been tested in wrists and knuckles, not shoulders. Less than a year later, the Australian regulator, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, had to issue an alert when some of the implants began to crack. I went to move my arm and I could hear this loud, audible squeak. He knew he was in a clinical trial, but didn't realise the device could crack. I could take a fair bit of pain, but that was... It was a stupid amount of pain. Dr Duke told the ABC he couldn't comment on individual cases and was committed to patient safety. Most of the time, if you've got this chronic situation... Eventually, Brisbane surgeon and part-time political advisor Dr Des Suarez took the implant out. So this is Wolfgang's X-ray, and this is the region where it actually cracked at the top of the implant. So this is now the, the ABC can reveal the US-made implant was never approved for use in America, only for patients outside the US. I think it's pretty crap. I really think they've got a lot to answer for. The TGA says it signed off because the device had European approval. It's not a prerequisite that a product has to be approved, say, in the US before it comes here. The TGA basically does a paper uh, assessment and looks at materials, but doesn't have clinicians giving them advice, and that is a big failure in our system. The makers now test individual pyrotitan implants before they're used. Now it's the top performing implant. In a statement, Integra Life Sciences said its implants underwent strength and impact testing before approval. Both surgeons and patients continue to confirm the benefits of this product. Patients are often unaware of problems with devices. In 2014, Carol Camilleri got breast implants to fix an uneven chest. She had no idea alarm bells were sounding that bacteria could grow in textured implants, potentially triggering a rare form of cancer. At that time, the TGA had recorded just eight cases of the blood cancer, but the ABC has found the actual number was four times higher. It took a while for us to realise the scale of the problem. That's because, at the time, the TGA was relying on its voluntary adverse events database by that time, there had been at least one death. Carol found a lump late last year. Two weeks later, I was diagnosed with anaplastic large cell lymphoma. 
uh, with a malignant tumour. The lump was a malignant tumour. I remember my GP gave me the results and we just hugged each other. So if you'd known about the risk, do you think you would have got the implants? Of course not. <laughs> no way. Breathe in and hold your breath. Carol needed surgery and radiation treatment. One year on, she's back at hospital to see if the lymphoma has returned. Could they let us risk our lives? We're not, we don't get implants to be vain, you know, it's very personal. It's, it's, it's wrong. Do you think the TGA should have done more or suspended those devices? We certainly don't believe suspension is warranted. Uh, in fact, we got together Australia's top seven or eight experts in the area. The view from, not us, but from this group of external clinicians, that a direct cause and effect has not yet been established. All uh, products, whether they're devices or medicines, have some risk, but you've got to look at that in the context of the many millions of lives saved. There's the industry says safety is its top priority. Medical devices are safe. We have a very thorough and uh, rigorous regulatory system in Australia. And quite simply, the success of our industry uh, is, is dependent on patients doing well. Even life-saving medical devices like this defibrillator aren't immune. We're going to bake it. But since 2012, it's had serious problems, such as failing to shock, shocking at the wrong time and turning off unexpectedly. It's even been linked to at least one death. That's concerned health advocate Pip Brennan. I was surprised and, and concerned. This class of defibrillator has the third highest number of all device complaints. The regulator didn't pull the machine off the shelf. Instead, the maker Philips voluntarily cancelled its registration mid last year. But 7.30 can reveal the defibrillator is still being used in ambulances in up to four states. The community expectation would be that the devices would be removed from the ambulances. They are no longer on the TGA's list of approved devices. What we heard from those state ambulance departments was that if all those products just came straight off the market now, they wouldn't be able to have defibrillators in many ambulances just because of the sheer cost. Today, people are more connected. The manufacturer Philips says it cancelled the product's registration for commercial, not safety reasons, and the device has saved millions of lives. Why shouldn't we have a device registry for all medical devices? Uh, it's been considered by all the health ministers of states and territories and the federal health minister. Hi, come in. Hi, how are you? But come any significant safety improvements won't come in time to help Carol. That's from the Today, oh, she'll find out if the blood cancer linked to breast implants has returned. Look right off the bat, your PET scan's clear. OK, I was OK, good. so I know you've been so worried about it, but there's yes. absolutely nothing okay. of concern there at all. Oh, that's great. She considers herself one of the lucky ones. I don't wish this on anyone. Late today, the Health Minister Greg Hunt asked the head of the TGA to review whether extra safety measures for medical devices are needed. That story was a collaboration between Radio National's background briefing, the ABC's specialist reporting team and an international consortium of investigative journalists.